We try to make a home here, but home is not here. Home is in Puerto Rico. When Puerto Rico was hit by back-to-back -back hurricanes last September, the island was already crippled by economic crisis and crumbling infrastructure. Recent estimates say nearly 3,000 people died after Hurricane Maria. Relief efforts were widely criticized as inadequate, even though President Trump insists otherwise. I think that Puerto Rico was an incredible, unsung success. As Puerto Rico struggles to rebuild, it has lost 8% of its pre-Maria population. One year later, Puerto Ricans who left their home shared their journey of displacement. A big surge just came in and we couldn't close the door. And we just hear a woman screaming and running down the street, like, we gotta get out, we gotta get out. They had bodies outside because they couldn't fit more bodies in the morgue. It didn't matter what class you belonged to, you were still struggling. Seeing this as a the big picture of it, I saw this as genocide. I left a little over three months after the hurricane hit. It was a very emotional day. A lot of tears, a lot of beers. <laughs> Leaving the island is something I never wanted to do. I am still in transit. I haven't really found a place to settle down. Well, right now I'm just living with my aunt and uncle. This here is a, a couch that my roommate bought. As you see, I am staying in her living room. I went to the evacuee center to see which, which, uh, what help they could um, provide for us. They gave us a tote bag, a bag with socks, and they question you so much, even though you have the paperwork that you come from Puerto Rico, it's written. I was checking for the Medicaid. They were like, oh, uh, jokingly, but it was kind of a stupid remark. It was like, oh, you should have a kid, then maybe we could have gotten you a insurance, I'm like, really? One of the things that really shocked me when I moved here was having a coworker actually tell me that in order for me to be successful at my job, that I would actually have to lose my Spanish accent. That's kind of isolating in a way, and it does get lonely for a while, and, and you feel foreign. My family's like all over the place and I can't see them. And it's, it just sucks. It sucks really bad. I'm gonna cry. It sucks really bad. I miss everybody. I still kind of have a little PTSD from rain or big storms. And that shock is real. I used to like close my eyes on the train and just start crying out of the blue. I'm still processing I'm here. I have a ton of friends and people I know that think that everyone who left is a coward. You kind of feel like you're betraying your country, like you're betraying your people. And that inner conversation goes in here, and that works on you. It doesn't mean that you're giving up on Puerto Rico, or that you're abandoning La Lucha. We are trying to do our best to make something out of ourselves, but it is frustrating when your own government, your people, oppress you. It's just crazy to be a U.S. territory, but not really feeling like it. There's still towns in Puerto Rico without light, without water. I mean, what does that say? It's gonna get probably a little worse before it gets better. And I would love nothing else to go back. I swear. I love to live in Puerto Rico. That's my, my home, my isla. I've thought about moving back there, trying to find a job, probably for minimum wage, which they have cut, is a really scary thought. There's no way that I, could, that I can win the money that I'm winning right now, that I will be able to have a fridge full of food. I didn't have that before. I guess now I have a say in who's our president, maybe.